Okay, I got bunches of stuff I'm going to be working. I think I'm going to work this slab here. It looks like a piece of heat treat. And uh, I got little chunks of stuff. But for now, I'm going to work the drill down a little bit more. Yep, because I have a feeling that this is not thin enough or more or narrow enough to be interesting. And uh, let's see, right now it's uh, three and seven eighths. At the base, it's like I don't know, five eighths at that point. I'm going to make it more narrow and I think I'm going to work on the, the stem here a little bit also. Just pressure flake. I'm just going to do it quickly. Just another short video on this drill. Let's see. It probably won't be a full 30 minutes, but we'll see. I'm starting late today. I try to start before noon if I if I can. Working on videos, but today I'm late. Yep. I've been looking for photos to post on Instagram. The kids want me to get on TikTok. I don't know. They say that's the place to be if you want to promote yourself or your channel or your business or yada, yada, yada. I don't know. So I never liked the site. I don't have a... I don't have the TikTok app on my phone. I deliberately don't put it on there. I don't watch TikToks. Although I do find myself on Instagram quite a bit. We'll see what happens. I took a lot of my photos down from Facebook. Yeah, I got disillusioned with social media, so I... I haven't really done much on social media. What's disillusioned? What does that mean? Well, it's a kind of a waste of time for one. It wait it can it can waste your time. Uh, it's a distraction. But also there's some shenanigans with private information. Yep. I don't like a site that's engaged in shenanigans. That's one reason why I also deleted my Twitter account. Uh, I deleted it twice, actually. I got on for a while to argue with people. But then I deleted the account. And then I got back on so I can see what was going on. You know, you get news pretty fast on Twitter. But I said, that's not worth it. Too many shenanigans. And it's too much of an excuse to waste your time. Yeah. I don't know, I might get on TikTok, who knows. I have a feeling the shenanigans are still... Still there on TikTok. All right, so I just regularized the base a little bit. Now I'm going to thin down, thin down the blade. It's just like any other blade. It's just a lot of pressure flaking. It's no big deal. I think it's the drills are no big deal. I don't know. Is it a big deal? 
you guys tell me if these things are a big deal. I'd be having a hard time making these because I think drills are the number one easiest thing to make in flint napping. Yeah, easiest. Other than little rocks from big rocks. But if you guys are having a hard time, just tell me what is the what's the issue with these? Why why are people having a hard time? Or they just want to see one being made? Maybe you guys just want to see it being made. Now this is a drill as opposed to a perforator. What's the difference? A drill actually does work and drills a hole. A perforator is just punches a hole or cuts a hole into something. Usually leather, but it can be used to punch holes in bark, tree bark, for instance, like birch bark, for uh, putting holes in it before you make a container out of it, or a basket, or a box, or whatever. Of course, you can use a piece of bone, too. It doesn't have to be stone. Stone is a little more durable than bone for edge quality. That's about the only reason I can see to use a stone perforator. It's just more durable. Cuts for a longer period of time. It doesn't wear down very easily. Yeah, with the drill, you don't have to go past halfway with these flakes. You don't have to thin it down. Just if you have a flake, you can just flint nap the edges down. Just trim around the edges. Keep trimming and trimming and trimming. I suppose it's good pressure flaking practice if you want to develop those muscles, develop the the mu muscle memory for being careful with these long narrow points if you're going to make long narrow arrowheads I suppose if you have a lot of drills under your belt it can come in handy the skill of just sitting here pressure flaking and make sure that you're not breaking whatever you're Pressure flaking. Do you just do you want to see the platforms? I don't know what's the issue. What is the issue with these? I just push down, and if I start getting step fractures, I I put the tool higher up on the edge and push down harder. If I'm getting stiff fractures by pushing down too lightly or on areas that are weak, I just set the tool on a stronger area, maybe up higher, push down, maybe change the angle of my work so I can see better. If I get crushing in a little area, I can take my spatula tool to pick out these step fractures see that right there a little bit of crushing in the step fracture I can try to get that out and if it doesn't come out guess what no big deal it's a drill doesn't need to be perfect It doesn't need to be perfect, but it can be perfect. P-E-R-F-E-K. Yeah. That means good enough. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm.
Mm -hmm. Now let's see, I can talk about uh, what these are used for. They're used for drilling uh, sockets for four shafts. And uh, they can be friction fit sockets or glue sockets that are going to contain glue. If it's a friction fit socket, you want to have part of this drill uh, parallel or close to parallel because that'll make the friction fit that much better. If uh, part of the shaft of the drill is parallel sided. I'll show you. Try to make it parallel like up here in this area. Not completely. It doesn't have to be completely parallel, but it helps. Why? Because friction fit um, has no glue. That's what, that's what they mean by friction fit. It's just held in by friction. And if there's a section that's parallel in there or nearly parallel, it, it kind of fits in tighter. And uh, it won't slip out as easily as if it is, you know, extremely tapered, extremely um, or drastically tapered. The more parallel it is, the more it, it uh, can uh, use friction to keep it in place. Now what happens when you're using a drill like this, you got to drill the holes first or drill the sockets first before you make the four shafts. And one drill can be consistent enough and will probably last long enough to provide sockets for half a dozen four shafts of the same size. So it'll be, you know, I could make six, at least six different sockets with this one drill without resharpening and changing the dimensions. I mean, you can resharpen and not change the dimensions too much. But anyway, when the dimensions don't change, you can make mass produce sockets that go in to any of those shafts that you've pre-drilled. Any any one of those four shafts can fit any of those sockets, as long as they're all matching the dimensions of the socket. But you've got to drill them first, and then you make the four shafts to fit. And then you can put whatever you want on the tips of the four shafts. Stone points, bone points, sharpened wood. You can make antler points that will fit into the four shaft sockets. You can make blunts. Blunts look similar to this, except made of wood, right? And they just fit into the shaft and you have a, a blunted top. Of course, it won't look like this. It'll be, you know, from the top it'll be circular, completely circular, on a piece of wood that's a blunt, what they call a blunt. The way this is now, this matches what the four shaft top looks like. And you just mount your atlatl dart point. You know, the width of the top of the drill should match pretty closely the width of the stem. All right? So when you make a four shaft, the four shaft will fit the stem. You know what I mean? This is almost perfect. So you get what I mean? This can be used as a four shaft, I mean, a, a, a uh, projectile point for a atlatl dart four shaft because the width of the neck is pretty close to the width of the neck of the drill. Right? Right. Oh, I got this one sitting in my stuff I made recently. 
This is a little bit too wide, but this is what modern hunters like. They like this kind of stuff. I think this is way too wide for an arrow, but a lot of people like them. It's 150 grains. Let's see. I'm going off topic here. This is two and a half by one and know, three eighths. 150 grains, just to give you an idea of the size that you need to come up with a 150 grain stone point. Um, let's see, the, it's uh, like 3 16 inch thick. Yeah, this is a kind of, this is a raw root beer style or root beer chert, yeah. But anyway, I use these as a pattern. I use this one in particular as a pattern. Anyway, I took the drill down a little bit, but not too much. Um, let's see. I can go as thin as I as I want, I guess, until it gets really weak, and then it might break. Now, I gotta watch this, make sure it stays straight. But this should be able to drill a four shaft socket pretty easily. I forget what the dimension was earlier, but now it's like a half inch across that part that I measured before. So I think I lost an eighth of an inch. I don't know, what else could I do? What else could I do to mess with it? I could, I could actually get maybe a shaft and drill a socket. Maybe I'll do uh, that little dart point with a four shaft and uh, install it into a socket using this drill. I won't sell this drill yet. I'll use it for a little project. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Okay, let's see. 17 minutes, that's good enough. All right. See you in the next video.